The introduction of private browsing mode for web browsers has been a wonderful thing. It's often stigmatised with the use of pornography, but in fact it has many uses beyond that. It goes by the name incognito mode in Chrome, private browsing in Firefox and Safari, and in private browsing in Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer. They are essentially the same features in a different web browser with another name. Personally, I think it's a criminally underused feature that more people should be using. So, for this video, I would like to count down my top 5 uses for private browsing mode on your favourite digital device. At number 5, preventing products from appearing in shopping histories and advertisements. You may want to keep your search history private from online websites. For example, if you search on Amazon for something to buy, Amazon will remember. You should start seeing ads appearing for the item you look at. It doesn't end there. Other websites you visit more than likely have Amazon's advertisements. This can follow you around the web. The best way to deal with this is to use a private browsing window. Any activity in the private browsing window mode will not be linked with your Amazon and browsing sessions. At number 4, bypassing article reading limits. Some websites limit you to only a few articles before closing them off for non-subscribers. The number of articles you've read is stored in your web browser's cookies. To solve this problem, open a private browsing mode tab on your web browser. The web page should load normally. If you run into the limit in the private browsing window, just close the private browsing window and reopen it to continue your reading. At number 3, bypassing search engine filtering and see how other websites look to the public. Websites customise the experience for its users. Google, for example, uses your search history and other information it knows about you to show you custom search results. To escape this filtering, open a private browsing window and perform your search on Google. You'll be signed out in the private browsing window, so you'll see the unfiltered Google search results. The private browsing window will have a new set of cookies, so Google can't tailor the results based on your past searches. At number 2, sign in temporarily on other people's computers. Sometimes you may need to use someone else's computer to sign into one of your accounts. Normally you would have to sign them out first and then sign yourself in. Let's not forget about remembering to sign out of your account afterwards. A right pain in the neck. Instead of that nonsense, just open a private browsing window and sign into your account in that window. Once you're finished, close the window and you'll be signed out completely. At number 1, sign into a website with multiple accounts at once. Most websites will not allow you to sign in with more than one account. Yet again, private browsing mode offers a solution to the problem. Instead of signing out and signing in with another account, you can now stay in your main browsing window and open a private browsing window alongside it. Sign in to a different account in a private browsing window and you'll be signed into two accounts at once. This works because the browser's cookies aren't shared between these windows. 